Hi, and we're back with another question for Ask Dr. Susan Live. And today I have Michelle on the phone. Hi, Michelle. Hi. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you. Well, thank you so much for submitting your question. And this is a question that a lot of our listeners are going to want to know about. So uh, let's hear it. Okay, well, uh, recently I went to the doctor in search of um, hormone replacement therapy. And they did the blood work and found out that my testosterone levels were within normal range, but my estradiol was low, like mm -hmm. less than five. Yeah, but so less than five, just for those who are listening, is undetectable. That means your ovaries have stopped producing estrogen. So you're postmenopausal. May I ask your age? I'm 57, but I was 34 when I had my ovaries removed. Oh, so you've had the surgical menopause. Yeah, right. so of course your estradiol yeah. will be zero, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, he wanted, he's, he's big into uh, pellet therapy, but mm -hmm. testosterone pellet therapy. Mm -hmm. and he wasn't too happy about giving me any um, estrogen. You know, and why is that? In another form. Um, he said something like that since I had taken Premarin in the past, which I did short, you know, right after my surgery. Um, he was worried about blood clots, that sort of thing. Um, but he didn't think that doing nothing was an option, so he was going to give me uh, low-dose testosterone. But my concern was, and my question to you is, is, they mentioned that some of that testosterone will convert to estrogen in the body. My That's concern right. was, is it going to be enough conversion to give me that protection from you know, um, osteoporosis and Alzheimer's and heart disease? Yeah, oh, that's such a great question. And there's several parts to that that I want to address. I was so excited I almost interrupted you. There's so much miseducation and misinformation amongst physicians, uh, including myself prior to getting very educated about whether or not you can take estrogen. So what I'm hearing is that your provider is still using some very old information that came from the Women's Health Initiative study that's almost 20 years old now. Uh, so based on that study, which is again, very, very old, there were some theories that were made up that we should not take estrogen for longer than X number of years. And none of this is factual. So people made it up and they said, well, you shouldn't take estrogen longer than five years, 10 years. You shouldn't take it when you're over 60. Lots of different combinations. And that all came from the fact that in the Women's Health Initiative study, the women who took Premarin and Prem Pro, which are drugs we do not use anymore, seemed to have an increased risk of certain things the longer that they took it. So it's sort of comparing apples to oranges because now we're using bioidentical estradiol and testosterone. We don't see those risks. The risk of blood clot, heart disease, and stroke was higher in women who took oral estrogen in that study, but that was purely related to the fact that it was taken by mouth. So now, because it goes through the liver, it upsets the blood clotting factors. So there are lots of very, very good studies showing that if we do not take estrogen by mouth and we take it in some kind of non-oral form, including pellet, cream, sublingual, patch, what have you, there's no increased risk in blood clot, heart disease, and stroke. So sometimes people, including doctors and the smartest people on earth, get little pieces of information and patch them together. And what comes out is something that really isn't factual. And that sounds like what's happening in your case where they've said, oh gosh, well, she took Premarin for 10 years or some number of years in the past, so we shouldn't give her estrogen anymore. But we're anticipating giving you a totally different type of estro estrogen in the pellet would be bioidentical estradiol that does not go through your liver. So there's no increased risk of blood clot, heart disease, stroke. So absolutely you can take estrogen, number one. So I would recommend taking estrogen because we know that estrogen, as you said, protects our bones from osteoporosis. It protects our brains from Alzheimer's disease. Also lowers the risk of colon cancer, prevents vaginal dryness, helps our sexual well-being in general. Uh, so, so estradiol is great. So I, I would absolutely put it in the pellet if I were you and I would go in to get a pellet, put some estradiol in there. Now, if someone cannot take estradiol, and that is not you, by the way, based on what you've told me, but for example, someone who actively has breast cancer, they're in the process of getting their chemotherapy, they have breast cancer right now. That patient should not get estradiol if she has an estrogen sensitive breast cancer. So those patients do very well on testosterone only because like you said, a little bit of the testosterone is what we call aromatized or converted into estradiol, but only a little bit. So it's enough to help with symptoms in some patients. For example, if you're a breast cancer patient and you're really struggling with hot flashes, 
you know, a little bit of that, a tiny bit of estradiol, not very much because we don't want to stimulate the breast, can alleviate some of those symptoms, but it's not enough to provide the benefits that estradiol provides. Now, that being said, testosterone is very good for your bones. So testosterone only does uh, protect the bones from osteoporosis, probably as well as estrogen, but both together is the gold standard. Testosterone is also good for heart health, so that's great. Haven't seen a connection between testosterone and reduction of Alzheimer's disease, so estrogen is uniquely good for that. And also vaginal dryness, which is a huge one. That's uniquely related to estradiol. So in your particular case, if you were seeing me, I would absolutely put a little bit of estradiol and a little bit of testosterone in that pellet. Now, I was also curious to hear that your testosterone levels were within normal range because you don't have ovaries. So you're not making any testosterone from your ovaries, but your testosterone level, I'm sure, was very, very low. We make some in our adrenal gland, and it may fall within the lab's so-called normal range. However, it's not the optimal range for the benefits that we want. So for women who are our age, we are looking at testosterone levels that are higher than normal for our age, more trying to simulate what we had when we were younger. So I would highly recommend that you get a little bit of estradiol, we don't need much, and a little bit of testosterone in pellet form would be a great choice or any, any kind that is not taken by mouth so it avoids all the blood clotting issues. So for you, um, having had your ovaries removed so young, um, it's really important to have these hormones in your system forever. So the current science supports taking hormones to the end of life, not stopping after so many years or at a certain age. Because those risks do go up, once we stop taking hormones, we don't want to have osteoporosis, of course, like you said, or Alzheimer's disease or colon cancer. And we know now that testosterone actually very likely lowers the risk of breast cancer. So there's so many different uh, health benefits that are protecting us from heart health, heart health, heart disease, all kinds of things. So uh, really great question and illustrates how curiously even some providers that are using pellets haven't got the whole picture <laughs> together. Right, right. Not, not to be critical, um, because I didn't know either. You know, I, I, we're not taught this in med school, and we're not even taught it sometimes when we're taught how to place a pellet. But, um, you know, it really does take an enormous amount of keeping up with literature and research to be up to date on what's going on with hormones. And um, nobody would have time to do that unless they didn't have anything else to do, like me. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> So uh, definitely get some estradiol, get some testosterone. I highly recommend it. Another thing that I recommend, even though you've had a hysterectomy, I still give my patients progesterone. And I don't know if that's something I, they had suggested. I still have my, um, I still have my uterus. They only took the ovaries. Oh, I, mm, that's unusual. Yeah, keeping the uterus and taking out the ovaries, that was a really unusual surgery. So I'm surprised to hear that they did that. But probably I'm guessing it was to just maintain the possibility of future fertility with a donor egg or a frozen egg or something like that. So you could still carry a baby in the uterus, even if you had to have your ovaries out. But bit unusual. But regardless, for any of us who have a uterus, if we're taking estrogen, we definitely need to take progesterone as well. Because estrogen alone, over years and years, this doesn't happen overnight, can increase the risk of uterine cancer. Now, that being said, even if you don't have a uterus, I give progesterone to everybody because it helps you sleep, it helps with mood stabilization, it has a lot of other benefits other than just preventing uterine cancer. So I give it to all my patients. I take it myself, so it doesn't really matter if you have a uterus or not, but definitely if you have a uterus, you need to take progesterone. So take all three. And I see that Michelle's call has dropped. I'm sorry that we lost you, Michelle, but I hope you can hear the end of the answer to your question on YouTube. And that was such a great question. Thank you. How long can I take estrogen? I think I hear that almost every day. And there's so much misunderstanding about the answer to the question. And when doctors tell you that you need to stop your hormones, it's based on old information, like really, really old. The Women's Health Initiative study was published in 2002 almost 20 years ago. So we need to get that out of our minds and start looking at new data. And so keep taking your hormones. I'm gonna be taking mine for the next 50 years or until I get buried in my biodegradable box. So if you found this interesting, please write some comments below, share it with your friends. We'd love you to subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with what's going on. And if you have a question for me, you can submit it to drsusan.com ask. 
and I'll look forward to seeing you next Wednesday here on my new YouTube channel.